in the last lecture of week 5 we will do some practice problems on first order differential equations okay so i'll just do a couple of problems that illustrate the techniques that you use in first order differential equations so so let me take the first problem so the first problem is to is to solve this differential equation and uh, i'll give you the differential equation so solve the differential equation is dy by dx plus 3x square y equal to 6x square okay and uh, when we see this differential equation we'll solve it in one way okay that uh, that illustrates the, the use of uh, variation of parameters okay so let's let's write this in a in the form dy minus equal to 0 or, or or rather I'll write it as dy plus 3x square y minus 6x square dx equal to 0 ok. I deliberately wrote it in this way we will see why we wrote it this way ok. But uh, let me mention right at the beginning that there might be other ways to, to solve this equation also for example you could just see this because you have an x square here and an x square here ok. So, uh, by separation of variables ok. So, what do, what do I mean by separation of variables? So, you would write dy by dx is equal to 3 x square times 2 minus y ok and uh, and then therefore, you would write uh, you would write dy by 2 minus y is equal to 3 x square dx and if you integrate both sides you will get log of 2 minus y divided by minus 1 ok. This is equal to x cube plus constant. So, so uh, if I if I go ahead and multiply it out what I will get is I uh, will get I oh, will get 2 minus y is equal to I will get e raised to minus x cube into e raised to minus c. c is the arbitrary constant ok. And now I can write y is equal to 2 minus e raised to minus c I can just call this some constant d e raised to minus x q. So, this is the solution. Okay. You can solve this differential equation just by separation of variables. Now, what we, what I will do for illustration is to solve the same equation ok using a slightly different procedure and uh, where, where we will use the integration factor ok. So, so the same equation where, where we know the solution. So, uh, we know that uh, the solution has this form y equal to 2 minus d e to the minus x cube where d is some arbitrary constant and uh, to determine d you need some boundary condition. Okay. So, now uh, let us try to solve this using uh, using a slightly different procedure. So, in order to do this I will write the differential equation in this form. So, dy plus 3 x square y minus 6 x square dx equal to 0. So, let us rewrite this so, again. So, I will take the right hand side that is 3 x square y minus 6 x square dx plus dy 3 x square y minus 6 x square dx plus dy equal to 0 ok. So, now what you can do is you can take this this equation uh, you can check for exact is this an exact differential. So, calculate dou m 
by dou y is equal to 3 x square and dou n by dou x n is just a constant n is just 1 equal to dou by dou x of 1 that is equal to 0. So, dou n by dou x is 0. So, so clearly dou m by dou, dou y is not equal to dou n by dou x. Now, now if I take dou m by dou y minus dou n by dou x. Okay, so, if I take this difference then what I find that this is equal to 3 x square because dou n by dou x is 0. Okay. So, now 3 x square so, so you immediately realize that uh, n of x y equal to 1. Okay, so, this implies 1 by n dou m by dou y minus dou n by dou x is equal to 3 x square. Okay, so, this is only a function of x. only depends on x. Okay. So, therefore, we can look for for an integrating factor alpha of x, alpha that depends only on x. Okay. So, so we go ahead and we put this integrating factor. So, then our equation becomes alpha of x times 3 x square y minus 6 x square d x plus alpha of x d y equal to 0. And uh, now, now uh, we know that uh, now this, this equation is exact, this equation is exact that implies, implies implies that this whole left hand side is some function u. Okay. So, d u equal to alpha of x 3 x square y minus 6 x square d x plus alpha of x d y. Okay. So, uh, so we immediately know that, uh, that uh, dou u by dou x is equal to alpha of x 3 x square y minus 6 x square and dou u by dou y is equal to alpha of x. Okay. Now, we will come to this a little later, okay. but let us go back to the condition for exact differential. So, the condition for exact differential says that uh, differential. So, this states that uh, that uh, dou by dou y of alpha of x times 3 x square y minus 6 x square. This should be equal to dou by dou x of alpha x. Okay. Now, this is just d by dx of alpha x okay. and on this side what I will get is uh, alpha x I can take it outside. So, I have alpha of x. Now, derivative with respect to y of this quantity that will just give you 3 x square equal to d alpha of x by d x. Okay. And uh, I can rewrite this as d alpha by alpha is equal to 3 x square d x. And if you integrate both sides, you will get alpha, uh, the natural log of alpha is equal to x cube or alpha equal to e raised to x cube. I am not writing the constant of integration, that will not be necessary here. Okay, so, alpha equal to e raised to x cube okay. and you recall here we had this, this factor of e raised to minus x cube in the, in the actual solution 2 minus d e raised to minus x cube. Okay. And we will quickly see how this, uh, 
how this will also give the same result. Okay. So, next uh, what can you say? Now, you go back to these equations. So, so we know that dou u by dou y is alpha x. So, therefore, you can say that dou u by dou y is equal to e raised to x cube. Okay. Now, if I integrate both sides with respect to y, what I will get is u, u is a function of x and y, right. So, u can be now, now, now if I integrate the right hand side with respect to y, then e raised to x cube is like a constant. So, it is so you will just have e raised to x cube multiplied by y and you will have a constant of integration, but since you are integrating with respect to y, that constant can be any function of x, any function of x. Okay. So, this is what uh, you get. Okay. Now, in order to determine this function of x, we use dou u by dou x is equal to. So, so we go back to our expression. So, dou u by dou x was alpha x 3 x x square y minus 6 x square. So, this is alpha of x 3 x square y minus 6 x square. Okay. So, so now, now if you substitute this form of u, okay, then you can see that uh, dou u by dou x is nothing but derivative of e raised to x cube that is uh, 3 x square y e raised to x cube okay. and you have uh, plus d f of x by d x. Okay. So, this is equal to this term here. Now, uh, alpha of x is nothing but uh, e raised to x cube. So, so what you will see is that uh, these two terms will cancel and what you will get is d f by d x is equal to minus 6 x square e to the x cube. Okay. And, uh, and you can solve this and you will you can immediately see from here if you you can see that uh, derivative of e raised to x cube will be e raised to x cube into 3 x square. So, so this is nothing but uh, equal to minus 2 d by d x of e raised to x cube. And so, what you get is that uh, is that f is equal to minus 2 e raised to x cube. And now, now you can substitute in here. So u becomes e raised to x cube y, x cube into y. Minus two e raised to x cube. Okay. And uh, remember, this is an u is this exact differential. So, du is this. So, the differential equation is du equal to 0. So, du equal to 0 is the, is the differential equation. So, the solution is u is a constant. Okay. Solution is u is an arbitrary constant. So, so then I can write my solution as, as this equal to constant, constant c. Okay. And, uh, if I just multiply by e raised to minus x cube, okay, then what I will get is this implies y is equal to c e raised to minus x cube. Okay. Now, if I multiply by e raised to minus x cube, this will cancel this. So, and you will get plus 2, which is exactly the same as what we got earlier. We got 2 minus d e raised to minus x cube, which is exactly the same as what we go, what we have here. Okay. So, so you can think of C as minus D and you will get exactly that same equation. Okay. So, so C is an arbitrary constant, okay. just like what we had D here okay. and uh, you get exactly the same equation. So, this problem illustrates how you can solve a simple differential equation using, uh, using both integration factor or using separation of variables. Okay. And now, in this case, we could we could do the separation of variables because our straightforward. Okay. So, since our equation was straightforward, we could also do separation of variables, but there are cases when you cannot do separation of variables and you have to go for integrating factors. Okay. 
So, this is the first problem I wanted to do. Now, the second problem that I will do okay, will illustrate the use of matrix methods. Okay. So, here, here what you will do is you will solve these equations. Okay. So, solve the equations. So, I will say d x by d t is equal to minus 3 x minus 2 y and uh, the other equation is d y by d t is equal to 4 x plus 3 y. Okay. And the initial conditions are x of 0 equal to y of 0 equal to 1. So, uh, here, here since I have two differential equations, I need two initial conditions x 0 equal to 1 and y 0 equal to 1. So, these are the two initial conditions. So, when you finally, finally solve this, this equation, you will have no undetermined constants. Okay. So, now, now what you could do is I can immediately write this in matrix form. So, I write d by dt of this matrix x y is equal to minus 3 minus 2 4 3 times x y. Okay. So, it is a set of uh, linear equations with constant coefficients. Okay. So, uh, so then what I uh, will what do is solve for the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay. So, so what you want to do is to solve for the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix. So, so, so to solve for eigenvalues we use minus 3 minus lambda. So, this determinant 3 minus lambda minus 2 4 this determinant should be equal to 0 and that implies you can this has so minus 3 into 3 is 9 and then I have minus 3 into minus lambda so that is 3 lambda and I have I have 3 into minus lambda so that is uh, again minus 3 lambda so that will cancel and then I will have lambda square. So, lambda square minus 9 is what I get from this and then I will get plus 8 equal to 0. So, this implies lambda lambda square minus 1 equal to 0 or lambda equal to plus or minus 1. So, our two eigenvalues are plus 1 and minus 1. Okay. Now, if lambda equal to plus 1 okay so if lambda equal to plus 1 okay then uh, then the, our uh, our eigen vectors to solve for the eigen vectors we have uh, we have to use the condition so minus 3 minus 1 minus 2 4 now 3 minus 1 is 2 this times x x1 y 1 equal to 0 0. So, we have this equation and you can clearly see minus 4 minus 2 4 2. Okay. These are the same equation. Okay. So, uh, obviously, they should be linearly dependent okay. and you can clearly see this because this gives you minus 4. So, so this term is equal to equal to minus 4. So, you have minus 4, minus 2 in the first row and you have 4, 2 in the second row and clearly the first row is just minus 1 times the second row. Okay. So, so clearly these two rows are linearly dependent. So, I choose x1 equal to 1. So, if I choose x1 equal to 1, then I will get, uh, so if I choose x1 equal to 1, okay, then uh, what you will get is that uh, you get 4 plus 2 y 1 equal to 0. So, y 1 equal to minus 2. Okay. So, uh, so my Eigen vector becomes is just 1 minus 2. Now, first Eigen value is plus 1, the Eigen vector is 1 minus 2. Now, if lambda equal to, if lambda equal to minus 1, Okay. Now, in this case, in this case what happens is you have uh, minus 3 
minus of minus 1 that is so minus 3 plus 1 that is minus 2 minus 2 you have a 4 here and uh, 3 plus 1 is 4 x 1 y 1 equal to 0 0. So, the Eigen vector in this case if I take x 1 x 1 equal to 1 then then implies y or, or x 2 in this case I should write x 2 ok. So, lambda 1 lambda 2 ok. So, sorry this should be the second Eigen vector. So, y 2 equal to minus 1 and your Eigen vector is 1 minus 1. Okay. So, we have the two Eigen values and two Eigen vectors and now and now we can write the general solution. Okay. So, the general solution a general solution as uh, in the following form. So, so general solution is this x y is equal to. So, what I do is I take the first Eigen vector which is 1 minus 2 multiplied by c 1 and then I put the e raised to this Eigen value lambda 1 t ok. Lambda 1 t is lambda 1 is just 1. So, e raised to t ok and uh, the second term c 2 1 minus 1 e raised to minus t. So, this is my general solution and notice that the general solution has two undetermined constants. So, so what do I do? I know that each of these terms is a solution. I know that uh, this is a solution. I know that this is a solution ok. So, once you know that these two are solutions ok. Now, uh, we we wrote the general solution as a linear combination of this of, of these two solutions. This is actually a special property whenever you have uh, what is called a homogeneous equation where where each term contains the dependent variable to the same power. So, x to power 1, x to power 1, y to power 1, y to power 1, x to power 1, y to power 1. So, so this is a linear uh, homogeneous differential equation and whenever you have such an equation then uh, if you have two solutions you can write the general combination as a linear combination of these solution. So, so multiple of one solution will still be a solution. Okay, similarly, any multiple of uh, of the other solution will still be a solution. So, the general solution can be written as a linear combination of these two solutions and uh, and the C 1 and C 2 are determined by the boundary conditions. So, so we know that x of 0 equal to 1 implies C 1. So, when t equal to 0 this this just the you just have C 1 and you have plus C 2 equal to 1. And then you have y of 0 equal to 1 implies minus 2 c 1 minus c 2 equal to 1 ok. And uh, if you add these two you will get uh, you will get uh, c 1 equal to minus 2 and c 2 equal to 3. Okay, so, so, if I just add these two I will get minus c 1 plus 0 equal to 2. So, c 1 equal to minus 2 and then if I put c 1 equal to minus 2 then c 2 has to be equal to 3 and you can verify. So, if this is 3 then this is plus 3 uh, and if this is 2 is 3. So, this is minus 3 and uh, minus 2 c 1 is plus 4. So, 4 minus 3 equal to 1. So, so uh, this is the solution. So, I can write my general solution in the following form x y is equal to 1 minus 2 e raise to t plus or minus 2. So, plus 3 1 minus 1 e raised to minus t. So, so in other words in other words I can write x is equal to minus 2 e raised to t plus 3 e raised to minus t and y is equal to 4 e raised to t minus t minus 3 
e raise to minus t. So, so if I just if I just equate the first first row, I'll get uh, I'll get this above equation. If I equate the second row, I'll get this equation. So, so in this way, you can use the method of matrices to get the general solution of the differential equation. And uh, and just for just for uh, practice, you can verify that if I take if you take dx by dt, you get nothing but uh, minus three x plus 2y and if you take dy by dt you will get 4x plus 3y. So, you can verify those for practice. Okay. So, so with this I will conclude the fifth week of classes okay. and uh, next, next week we will start looking at second order differential equations.